So Google created Flutter and Facebook created React Native. They're both frameworks that allow you to create mobile apps that work on both iOS and Android from a single code base. In this video, I'm gonna be going over some of the pros and cons of each one and give you my recommendation on what I suggest learning or using for projects. The first thing I wanna go over is the ability to do code sharing on React Native. Now, because you use React in React Native, you can handle or use components from your React website in your React Native app. So this has been really handy for me when I've been building one of my projects. So on the right here, I have a React website, and here I just have a search for recipes. And so I'm able to use the React component that I'm using to fetch the recipes from the server on my React Native app over here. Um, so being able to not only not have to recreate the component is very nice for just the speed of creating it, but also maintaining it is a lot easier because as I make changes, I'm not having to keep two components in sync on the website and the app. So React Native has the ability to do that, and there's also stuff like React Native Web, which allows you to have a single code base that works on both the website and an app so you're hitting almost three platforms ios android and the web at the same time so flutter doesn't have this quite yet but it looks like it is underway with a project called hummingbird which lets you use flutter for the web this is going to be really interesting i'm excited to see this and being able to take i guess your flutter widgets and use those on the web as well so i think this has a lot of potential but as of right now, React Native has a way better code sharing ability and being able to reuse those React components is pretty huge. The next thing I wanna discuss is the NPM packages you have access to. So all the JavaScript packages on NPM you can use in React Native. Now, of course, you can't use the ones that just work on the web, but there are a lot of them that you have access to and that is pretty big. There's just more third-party libraries available to you compared to the ones you have available with Flutter. Now the one that is missing for me in Flutter is I'm a big GraphQL fan. So the Apollo tools have been super nice when I've been building out my application using GraphQL. And those are just not available to you in Flutter as of right now. Now, of course, I'm sure Flutter's are gonna be working on this. And as the ecosystem grows, we're gonna see more and more support for third-party libraries. And you, will have to, you won't have to create as much from scratch and flutter as that gets built up. Next thing I wanna go over is performance. So this is something that I've heard a lot of people talk about how flutter is faster or more performant because React Native has a JS bridge that has it has to go over. Basically just the way that React Native is architected versus the way flutter is architected. Flutter is architected in a way where it can be more performant. Now, personally, I haven't really seen any benchmarks, so I can't really say how much faster um, comparatively, but I've noticed the same thing just using Flutter apps that I've downloaded compared to React Native apps. They do feel just a little bit smoother. They feel very buttery smooth. Um, but with that said, React Native is going to be undergoing or is undergoing a large re-architecture. So it will be very interesting to see um, how, how much faster they can get it, if they can get it close to where Flutter is at, or if it's just gonna be an, uh, you know just a limitation of React Native the way they architected it at the beginning. Who knows, we could see React Native switching and doing the same thing under the hood as Flutter. Hard to say, um, but this is something where it sounds like Flutter has the advantage right now, and I'm not sure by how much. Um, I'd love to see some benchmarks. If you guys know of any, let me know. I'd love to see them. Um, but it'll be interesting to see if React Native catches up in some way. Now, the rest of the stuff that I wanted to go over, these things are uh, small things that don't break an application or don't really sway me too much from Flutter to React Native. Um, but these are, in general, some things I notice when using each. The first one is the error messaging is way better in Flutter, or at least my experience has been just using it lately. Uh, they actually pointed to like a line in my code that had the error in it, which was super nice. Now that might sound crazy, but coming from React Native, uh, sometimes you just get errors in it and you have no idea where it's coming from, which line of code caused it. The error message is very cryptic. Now I will say I got you know a couple 
flutter my errors, which I believe I just had no idea what they meant. But when I clicked on the line of code um, and I saw the log in the console, it made more sense than the app that was in the screen. So yeah, the error messages have been way better in Flutter. The other thing is the hot module reloading has been way better. For those of you that don't know what that is, basically when I type code and save it when doing something in Flutter, it is going to update the changes in the application. It's going to keep the current state and it happens very quickly. Uh, so you get real, real time uh, saving and updating in the app and it's very smooth hasn't crashed for me yet. Uh, compared to React Native, um, it's been way better. Uh, I've tried React Native, the hot module reloading uh, with Expo, I believe, and it just did not work as well as kind of laggy. And when I'm just using React Native in general, opening up Packager to start things up um, and like running the React Native server and stuff crashes multiple times per day when I'm just using it um, and the experience with Flutter I add some packages to the I think it's called like the pub spec or something that's where you put your packages or third-party packages you use it automatically just installs them and keeps going um, so with Flutter the experience of not having to like start and restart the server is much smoother stuff hasn't crashed in the middle where I experience that way more in React Native so I've really enjoyed that experience of coding in React Native and seeing the result pop up right away has been really nice. The next thing I'm really enjoying about Flutter is it's been more opinionated. Uh, so what I mean by that, I see kind of two things that really stuck out to me. The first is it kind of has more things supported initially. So what I mean by that is they have navigation built in was one thing I noticed and that's pretty nice. Whereas if you compare that to React Native, there is a whole bunch of third party navigation libraries for you to choose from. Um, and so that's kind of one of the things that I really like that it's built into Flutter uh, because every app you're gonna use is gonna use navigation. It's nice that it's built in and they have one that they recommend. The other place that I noticed stuff is the just the components that you get out of the box. All of Flutter's components are very pretty. They have both the material UI components and they have some Cupertino, the uh, iOS components, and they just all look really nice out of the box. I felt like there was more stuff. The one thing I noticed they had was like a floating action button, which I had to make my own in React Native. Um, so I really enjoy that they had just more stuff and it was prettier stuff. So I like that they are like pretty by default, uh, whereas React Native, some of the stuff is unstyled. Um, now, this is not a huge thing that it's not styled right away because you can always add the styles yourself and you may not even want the material styles that's in Flutter or the iOS styles, but it's kind of nice that they're styled out of the box. Next is the app size, just the default app size when you create a Flutter slash React Native app. So uh, this is an article that I found about Flutter. So this guy has an APK size of about 5 millibytes or megabytes. Uh, compare this to something like Expo. This is what I'm using with React Native. Again, you don't have to use Expo, but it's one of those things where Expo has a nice, uh, a lot of nice utilities, which are just not, you know, in the box or come with React Native. Whereas Flutter comes with a lot more things. So it's Expo feels like they have a nice utilities that I like to add. If you take take a comparison of just the minimum size. It is 20 megabytes on iOS and 15 megabytes on Android. So that's pretty interesting. It is quite a bit larger to create an Expo uh, just app compared to a Flutter app. Now, I don't know what a base React Native one is. I'm sure that is slimmer, um, but that was just one thing to note. Next, I have no idea how this is with Flutter, but uh, whenever I upgrade in React Native, uh, something usually breaks. Uh, you know, I don't know why, but there is upgrade in React Native has always caused problems. Now, I haven't upgraded in Flutter yet, so we'll see if that's the same case. We'll see. I can't tell you how much of an experience that's going to be like, but I will say React Native is currently working on better error messages and uh, making sure that it's easier to upgrade in React Native. And in general, React Native is working on improving a lot of things, so it will be interesting to see these things uh, change in the future. Last thing is pretty subjective. So you may have the total opposite opinion of this. 
Uh, but for me, I found Flutter coding in it. It just felt kind of boilerplate-ish. It reminded me a lot of using Java. Um, I liked Dart in general, but it did just feel a little boilerplate-ish. So I wasn't a fan of that. It just felt like I was creating a lot of extra classes, like an, a lot of extra do-nothing classes um, that felt kind of annoying and just extra things. And uh, I much prefer just the style of React and using JSX that you have access to that you do not have access to in Flutter. Again, this is a small thing. Uh, it's I like React Native and React and the JSX a little bit better, but it is not a huge it's not a huge deal for me personally. It doesn't really matter um, if I'm using Flutter or if I'm using React Native. It's not going to be the breaking point whether or not I have to write a little bit more code or whether I can't use JSX. It's just a small annoyance. So with that said, those were the things that really I've been thinking about and come to mind when I think about Flutter versus React Native. So if you asked me to create an app using uh, that did not use GraphQL and you didn't care if you had uh, a website component, you just wanted to create an app, I would tell you or I would choose to go with Flutter for that. Uh, I just feel like the experience right now is better for Flutter for creating just a regular app like that. Um, otherwise, I like having access to those ex those other libraries like Apollo and NPM packages um, and also being able to share the code between a website and an app is really important for a lot of projects. Um, just, just you have less engineers you have to hire to maintain those things. It's really nice. Um, so in that case, I would opt for React Native. Now, this is one of those things that can change a lot in the future. If Hummingbird comes out and it is a phenomenal uh, way to create a website, then you'll see me probably switching because being able to code share between the app and the website in Flutter would be really nice and I could see myself doing that. So as of, but at the same token, if React Native fixes a lot of these things and they're under uh, re-architecting stuff right now, they could be uh, moving up. I personally enjoy coding it better in React Native. Uh, so I would like to see React Native make these changes and I'm definitely rooting for them. But that's kind of where my mind is. I like the Flutter experience just for creating an app, but I like the NPM ecosystem of all the packages we have access to and the code sharing I can do with my website. So as of right now, I am sticking to React Native for creating those sort of things because those are important to me. Um, but at the same time, if you just told me to make an app, I would choose Flutter.